Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again at the Overflow. You know, today I just feel like I have a mandate to encourage you, you know, whatever you're going through to really encourage you, especially those of you who might be feeling a little burnt out. You know, you have been going and going and you just feel burnt out. I find that in the past few weeks, quite a few people have been, have been coming across their path, have been crossing my path, really. And you could tell that they are experiencing some burnout. You know, recently a young man sat across from me and as he shared what he was feeling and what he was going through, I could look into his face and I could see how spent he was, how hopeless he felt. You know, he felt as though life was just, you know, tossing him one side to the other and he just could not see the way out. And he was depressed, he was heavy. And I looked at that, you know, and in the same day, I actually met another person. And this person could not even open their eyes to speak with me because of the pressure that they were feeling. You know, and I just felt that I wanted to come out to you and to, to encourage you, you know, with the word of God today. Because this has been happening more and more. And I want you to know that. This is no surprise to God. You see, the way that the world is right now, the way that the world operates, God knew that this world was going to become a hustle and a bustle. He knew that we were going to be working longer hours, that there would be such a demand on people to just give, 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 just to survive, just to keep your heads above water. God knew that the world was going to become like this, that the simplicity of life was going to vanish. You know, it's as if we live in a time where we are, you ever looked at a waterfall and looked at the rate that the water falls there. And if you ever go under right where the water falls, it, it, there is a pressure. It comes down with such a, a heavy flow that you can't breathe. You can't catch yourself under it because it runs fast and it runs hard. You know, and that is what this world, being in this world and surviving, that is what it feels like right now for many. But I want you to know that God knew that the world would become like this. He knew that it was going to become fast paced. You know, um, sometimes, you know, we wish that the world could be different. We wish that, you know, we could go back to the simplicity of other days. But the world is what it is right now. And we have to survive because God has said to us that he wants us to be in the world. We can't go off into the mountain somewhere and depart from everybody and just say, well, we, you know, we will live in the mountains and we will do nothing and have nothing. That is not really the plan of God. He said you have to be in the world, but not of the world. And when he said not of the world, what he's really saying is you don't bear the characteristics of the world. You don't start to become like the world. Don't become godless. You know, don't be, don't become ravenous. Don't, don't become what the world, if you look at the character of the world, it's almost as if it wants to chew you up and spit you out, you know? And so even though we have to be in this world, we don't want to become those people who just run after things and, you know, it, it costs, it doesn't matter the cost and what it does to people. We don't want to become like the world. And sometimes we get infected by it because we have to be in it. You know, but the Lord knew that this world was going to become like this. And he literally prepared a survival kit for us. You know, if, if in, particularly, in particular, you are a bit discouraged today, you know, and experiencing that, you know, you have young people saying, is, is this life? Is this what it's going to be? Am I going to be getting up every day and getting into the rush and, you know, working from eight to four? Some people not even eight to four longer than that. And, um, you know, they wonder, is this it? I, they don't know if they could survive it. If this is what life is, just to be able to feed your family, just to be able to live, this is what the world has become. We need to deal with things as they are and not as we would like them to be, as my apostle says. Yes, so 
the Lord was sure to give us a survival kit because he knew what we were going to be facing in this day. And you know, it's so interesting that the people that I'm coming across that's going through this pressure and not being able to relate to it, a lot of them are millennials. You know, I mean, I could go on a lot about that and how this mindset was actually formed in the millennials not to be able to cope, right? The coping skills, it's not as prevalent, you know, and there are reasons for that. But I may have to deal with that in, in another post. But um, the scripture literally speaks about the young man. It said to us that... A time will come, and this was in Isaiah 40. He says, when even the youths shall faint and become weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. He said, this, this will happen. He says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He said, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Just get a picture of what the scripture is saying. It's saying that your young men, you will find that your young men, they're going to be weary. They're going to be tired. They're going to be falling down. He said, but there's an answer. And we're going to look at what this waiting on the Lord really looks like. He said, there's an answer. You don't have to be dragging into each day. You don't have to turn in the bed in the morning and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that morning has already come. And you know you're facing the day and you're heavy and you're just getting out there just to do what you have to do. That is not the plan of God. He made a way for us, you know. And the scripture said, just get the picture of what it's saying. It says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. You see energy there. There's energy, there's vitality, you know, to, to move forward in life. He says they shall run and not be weary. So imagine you are getting up in your day. You rise up out of your bed and you're ready to go. You could run and you're not weary. He said you will walk and you will not faint. So the picture that we are seeing today with people is not the picture that God had. Even though he knew that the day will come when the world will be just as it is. Where your survival would mean that you had to put in more time and more time. He knew this. But what it is to wait on the Lord. To wait on the Lord really is to look eagerly for him. To look out for him. And it even means to linger for him. Now it's so interesting that it says to look eagerly for him. So that every day when you get up. You could be looking out for God. What are you looking out for him for? What, is he bringing something? Is he going to be doing something? What are you looking out for him for? What are you waiting on him for? And I want you to know that every day he brings something new for you. The scripture says that his compassions and his mercies, they are renewed every morning. They are new every morning. So that every morning that we awake, we need to look for God, wait for God, linger a bit, right? Because you have to get into your busy day, yes. But he's saying, linger a little bit. Linger and wait to see what God has for you. Because he's coming with something to refresh you. Because his compassions, his mercies, his goodness, they are new every morning. Every morning you're supposed to get your supply from God. Wait for him. He is bringing it. He's bringing it. There's something in the scripture about getting what you need from God daily. You see what's happening and why we are fainting, why we are failing is because we are trying to live on last week's manna. We are trying to survive on last week's meal. Who does that? No one does that. Every day you need to be refreshed. Every day you need to receive something new. And the scripture told us that. Jesus himself said, he said, pray, give us this day our daily bread. It's a daily bread. It's daily refreshment. What is that daily bread? It is the word of God. Listen, people, you may not be in the practice of reading your Bible. But I want to tell you, if you could take time to just read one word, to just read a scripture, to get some 
part of the word because the word of God is the bread. Get something of the word of God. Speak to yourself. Yeah? And encourage yourself with the word of God. Just two minutes sometimes. You just need two minutes. Sometimes while you're traveling in the car, you could just take a little moment and you put on something, the audio word, something to encourage your spirit. But you need to get some bread. We're trying to live without bread. Yes? And so God intended that we would refresh ourselves every day. If you remember the people of Israel, when God started to give them manna, it literally said that they had, they could not take that manna and hoard it. He said, don't hoard the manna. But instead, what he said you needed to do is to, whatever he gave you that day, you eat it that day. And the moment they disobeyed God and they tried to keep the manna and to hoard it, what started to happen is that whenever they put it away, it started to make worms. So he was saying, don't try to hoard this thing. Come to me every day. Come every day to receive of me something fresh. Because his mercies, they are new every morning. Every day, there is something new for us. And I don't know if you know it, but I want you to hear this today. God does not give us more than we could bear. I mean, we would hear that, huh? that he doesn't give us more than we could bear. And you say, right now, I am at the end of myself. Right now, I cannot bear anymore. So I don't know what you're saying, but I promise you that God does not give you more than you could bear because he's that kind of God. He knows how much you can handle and he knows when you are breaking point, but he has also made provision for us to be able to bear it. And how did he make that provision? He says, come daily to me. Come daily to me. Receive from me daily. I have something for you. There's a scripture in the Bible. It's in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. He literally said, Jesus said this to us. Look at how these scriptures are in the Bible to help us to survive in this time. Stop trying to think about what it would have been like if you lived a hundred years ago. This is when you live. It is now. And hear what Jesus said that could help us now. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and you're heavy laden. He said, you come to me. He said, and I will give you rest. We are trying to get rest through all kinds of means and all kinds of people. But Jesus said, I will give you rest if you come unto me. You can't get that rest if you don't come unto him. Seek his face every single day. Do not miss a day. Your survival depends on it. Yes, he says, take my yoke upon you. Now you say, I don't want any yoke. I don't want anything to hold me. I don't want anything to restrict me. But listen to Jesus. He said, take my yoke upon you. He said, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. He said, yoke yourself to me, and you would realize that when you yoke yourself to me, you see, when you yoke to something, you have to move together with it. If that thing goes to the left, you go to the left. If it goes to the right, you go to the right. You know? So he said, yoke yourself to me. And he said, um, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and I will give you rest to your souls. He said, because my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. So God has made it possible for us to have a refreshing every single day. He said, I know you're going to be laboring, but I have the answer for you. I have the rest that you will need. You know, and one last thing I want to encourage us with. He said to us, he says, you know, peace. I leave with you. Some of us, we have lost that peace. We don't have that peace because we are focused on what is going on around us. We are focused on this life and all that it is doing to us. And we don't have that peace. But he said, peace, I leave with you. And my peace, I give unto you. He said, not like the world gives peace. Am I giving it to you? He says it's not the way the world gives peace. Because the peace that the world will give to you is temporary. The peace that the world will give to you cannot sustain you from day to day. It is a full peace. 
It's not the real thing. You see, the scripture refers to Jesus as the prince of peace. And as the prince of peace, he literally is responsible for peace. He is the one who dispenses peace. So he said, I want to give you peace. The other thing he told us, he said, I want your joy to be full. Some of us, we are depressed and we are down and we are pressed down by a spirit of heaviness that has come and sat upon us. And we can't seem to raise our heads to get into that joy of the Lord. Not just a joy that is just he, 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 ha, 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 but a joy that resonates from the inside of us. Where even when situations don't call for joy, we could still feel that joy on the inside. That is the plan that Jesus had for us. But he said, I don't want you to to look for the peace that the world gives because the world would say you need to get into yoga the world will say you need to meditate and just empty your mind and go out there but people i want to tell you don't go empty in your minds don't go just you know putting yourself out into the universe i want to tell you something about the spiritual realm that people do not understand you may go to do this meditation not understanding that what you're doing is entering the spirit realm. And when you enter the spirit realm, you have not just good entities, you have evil entities. And when you just go out there because you're saying, I want to meditate, you do not know which entity you are going to encounter, which is why the word of God tells us, if you're going to meditate, meditate on the word of God. Take your quiet time and think on the word of God. Think of what God is saying to you. Receive what he's saying to you. Don't just go meditating where you empty yourself because I'm telling you if you empty yourself the enemy will take an opportunity to come in this is for somebody this morning I hope you hear this be careful of the peace that the world wants to offer you because Jesus said the peace that I have for you it's not the same peace that the world is offering I have a better peace for you but then right after that he says let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid you know I'm so interested about this word troubled when you look up the word trouble, it says to agitate, you know, and I just, it just brought to mind for me, you know, in the washing machine, they have the agitator, the agitator. And what is happening in people's lives right now is that it's like if you're, you're agitated, you're moving up and down and to and fro, and it's causing turmoil on the inside. But Jesus said, don't let your heart be agitated. Don't let yourself get into a place where you be, feel like you're going up and down and to and fro and it's tossing you and you're being undone because he made a way for us to be able to survive this world. Listen, God wants us to laugh. He wants us to be happy. You say, but there's nothing to be happy about. I am telling you that there is always something to be happy about. You are alive. You have woken up in a new day. But you need to receive from God the thing that he has made available for you. His mercies are new every morning. And they are for you. That's why they're available. They are for you. You need to receive them. He wants us to laugh. Listen, even... Um, studies show that laughter, it reduces the stress hormones. You say, what to laugh at? I don't feel like, find something to laugh about. They literally tell you that. Find something to make you happy. Be around people that makes you happy. Listen, we always laugh about it because... When we go to church and we are there and we are worshipping and whatever and you know you have fellowship after and so. Literally we leave church as if we just had a drink of something. And we're just so happy with jolly. There's something, just something with the spirit of God. That you don't need wine, you know, because the spirit of God is just there to give you joy. You know, and so that joy and it's real and it's lasting, it's lingering, right? But they said laughter also releases endorphins. And do you know that they're saying that they've come to realize that endorphins helps to, to, to relieve you from physical pain. Listen, depression sometimes manifests in physical pain. God doesn't want us to be like that. So he wants us to take what he has provided. 
Listen, you will say, Minister, I don't know if you understand the battle that I have with depression at times. Listen, even if I didn't understand it, I think the Lord allowed me to get a little taste of it. I remember one day, out of nowhere, just like that, I was in the middle of, of do something that should have been, you know, I should have been okay. And in the middle of it, just like that, I just felt a depression come upon me. And I was like, I don't even understand this. I was like, Lord, what is this? What is this? I don't even know how it happened because nothing happened to, to, to cause it to, to, to think. But we don't understand. And I want to tell you this. Heaviness, there is a description refers to a spirit of heaviness. That spirit is not of God. That spirit comes, and the reason why it says heaviness is because it comes and it presses you down. It sits upon you. And if we don't wiggle our way out of it, if we give into it, because it also has a mesmerizing effect. That you don't want to be under the influence of this spirit. But somehow, you just let go and you don't fight to come out from under it. But the Lord is saying that we need to realize when that spirit of heaviness comes and realize that it is a spirit. It is a demonic spirit. And so that just suddenly came upon me. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? But I, I started to fight. I started to call upon God. And I want to tell you, if you are experiencing that spirit of heaviness, fight to call upon God. Open your mouth and say, Lord Jesus, help me. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I read in your word that your mercies, your compassions, they are new every morning. I need a dose. I need your help. Call upon him, right? Turn your eyes onto the hills from whence come at your help, the scripture says. All right? And when I did that, the Lord sent a word, a word of scripture. He sent a word through someone. And as they spoke those words, they didn't even know what they were doing. As they spoke those words, I just felt that spirit break. The power of that spirit was broken. And when it was broken, I said, my God. Look at how I understand the struggle that some people have with this spirit of heaviness and this depression that comes upon them. But God has made a way because he said, I want your joy to be full. I want you to be able to survive this world, to be able to survive what the enemy is doing and what he requires. Just the, the, the function of this world. He has made a way for us to do it, but we must get it daily. Amen? That is my encouragement for you today. I pray that you could receive it. And I just want to pray with you right now. Those of you, if you're experiencing that spirit of heaviness, you're feeling the, the, the weight and the stress of this life, I want to speak to you young men. I want to speak to you young people, young adults. The scripture says that you, you, you don't have the mindset really. And the young men are falling and they're failing. But you need to do what I've said here today. And daily call upon God. Wait upon him. Linger for him. Because he's bringing what you need to survive your day. Amen? So precious father... I just want to lift, oh, Father God, our young men. My heart goes out to our young men. Lord God, they have responsibilities. They are trying to build lives, oh God. They are new in this, in this run of life. And Lord God, many of them, they are feeling overwhelmed. They are feeling the weight of it. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, how I pray, oh God, that your hand will be upon them. How I pray, Heavenly Father God, that you will encourage them. Lord God, and not just our young men. And there are people all over that's just feeling the weight of this world. But Lord, you have made a way. And I pray, oh God, that they will take five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, whatever, oh God. To just linger and wait on you. To just eat your bread every day. To eat a bit of bread, Father. To encourage their souls and their spirits. To break that spirit of heaviness. Right now in the name of Jesus. I come against that spirit of heaviness. And I want you to receive this prayer for yourself. And I rebuke that spirit of heaviness right now. Set them free, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Set them free, oh God, from the works of this spirit, Lord. 
Lord, and release your joy. Release, oh God, that laughter. Release, oh Father God, your spirit of joy. You said, oh God, that you, you pour in that oil of joy for mourning. And so, Lord God, I pray that the oil of joy will begin to flow over your people, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we ask it and we thank you that you have made provision. You are such a good God. You're always good to us, Lord. And I bless you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And we will come together again next week in the overflow. Amen.